King's Island is one of those parks that everyone loves. They have a great coaster collection, a very impressive kids area, lots of attractions for everyone. This is a great park. And in this video, what I'm doing is I'm discussing the possibilities of what their future attractions might be. None of this has been officialized by the park. This is purely speculation. However, I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible. I'm looking at what the park needs, what gaps need to be filled. So before we take a look at what attractions could be coming from the years 2016 to 2020, let's take a look at the last five years. And the reason that I'm doing this is because it gives you an idea of when the last time the park added a certain type of attraction. A lot of the times you can predict the future by looking at the past. This year they're adding some flying scooters, they're making it a family ride expansion. Last year of course they added Banshee. 2013 they didn't really add anything major, the main thing they did was remove the Son of Beast. 2012 was the last time they expanded the water park when they had that new wave pool. And 2011 was the last time they added a thrilling flat ride and that was the Wind Seeker. Then they also had the Dinosaurs Alive walkthrough. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's look at what could be coming in 2016. I am predicting a Triotech Dark Ride. And what makes this great is that they already have a building that they can use for it. Who remembers Tomb Raider, also known as the Crypt? This was a Hus Top Spin that was removed, and it was actually an indoors ride, and so the building is still there. You can find it right by the Diamondback. The space is there, all they have to do is expand the building a bit more, and boom, you can fit a pretty sweet Triotech Dark Ride in there. King's Island could use a Triotech Dark Ride, that'd be a good fit for the park. And the year after that, I think that they should add a Thrilling Flat Ride. Like I said, the last time that they added a Thrilling Flat Ride was in 2011, so something like an SNS Scream and Swing would be a great fit. It doesn't have to be one of the two flat rides that I showed in those pictures. Those are just two examples of some flat rides that they could potentially add. My only worry with adding an SNS Scream and Swing is that Skyhawk at Cedar Point has been receiving lots of problems. So because they're having some issues with Skyhawk, I think that that might lower the possibility of Kings Island adding one. However, if they did choose to go that route, it would be a great fit. And in 2018, I think that that is when they should add their next roller coaster. That will have been four years since the Banshee, and what they could use is a great GCI Woody. As for where they could put it, I have attached an image from Google Earth, in which you can see a plot of land, which would be a great spot to put it in. This is right near that Tomb Raider building, in between Diamondback and the Beast. Plus, in that area, they can make it very secluded, almost hidden, kind of like the Beast is. And here's another great thing about this option. GCIs are not that expensive, especially when compared to a B&M. Banshee was the most expensive coaster that King's Island has ever gotten. You can get a good GCI for like $8 million. That is not that bad of a price at all. Especially if King's Island puts in a great GCI with a strong layout, $8 million? Pretty good bargain. For 2019, I think that they should focus on the family flat rides. There are some essential flat rides that every park should have, and King's Island is missing two of them. A Ferris wheel and an antique car ride. Almost every park has one of these two, if not both. King's Island has neither. These are classics. King's Island absolutely should consider putting these two in. And finally, for 2020, I think that they should focus their attention back to Soak City. I'd love to see them add some of those capsule slides in which the floor drops beneath you. I could see them going the route of Snake Pit at Dorney Park, you know, one of those slide complexes that Cedar Fair has installed at Dorney Park, Worlds of Fun, and now at King's Dominion for 2015. I very well could see them going that route. And I've also attached an image of Google Earth showing where they could potentially put it. I see two potential spots for a complex like that. I think either one would work just fine. So just to recap, this is how King's Island's next five years might look like. Again, this is just speculation, what I think the possibilities are. Right now, no new information has been leaked by the park, no hints have been given. So all of this is just going out on a limb, looking at what the park needs, where they could put it, and when they could potentially add it. It's very possible that when the summer starts, things will change, hints will be dropped, and then it will lead us to think that something else will be coming for 2016, and then for 2017. And if you think about it, five years is a long time, it's very likely that things will change, a new ride type will be unveiled, then parks will be adding it. So five year plans are hard to predict, especially when the video is being released in 2015 and we're looking at the year 2020. So I'd be very surprised if this all actually ended up happening. However, if these five attractions were added over the next five years, then that would help make Kings Island a more well-rounded park. 
Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Post your comments below about your thoughts on this video, and do me a favor, make sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, then make sure to subscribe. A shout out goes to all of those who sent in some of the photos that were used in this video. If you're interested in having some of your photos used in one of my videos, check out the description for further instructions. And if you'd like to go further in depth with Coaster Studios, like the Coaster Studios Facebook page for interactive discussions and behind the scenes footage. You can also check me out on Twitter. Until next time, Coaster fans, until next time.